Hello friends, this video on light part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to learn about something even more interesting. Now have you ever observed the rear back view mirror of the car? So when you look at the back view mirror of the car, you are able to get a view of your backside. Right? So with a mirror which is such small in size, in that mirror you are able to see the complete entire image of a car. A car is such big in size, but still inside such a small mirror you are able to see the image of such a big car. How is that possible? That is possible only when a diminished image is being formed. Only when an image which is smaller in size than the object is being formed. Only in that case we will be able to see the image of that object. Right? So there exists different types of mirrors where the size of the image is either smaller than the object or larger than the object. And because of this beautiful property of such mirrors, they find um, a variety of applications where they are used. Even if you have ever visited a dentist's place, you will see that they have a glass with which they observe your, uh, they do examination of your teeth. So if you say that, okay, something has happened in my gums, so they make use of that glass to see your gums. That because with this glass or with this mirror, they are able to see a magnified or a bigger image of the same tooth, which helps them to diagnose it more easily. So that means you have a couple of applications of these kind of mirrors and these kind of mirrors which produce images which are either smaller in size or larger in size than the object, they all fall in the category of spherical mirrors. So till now we were talking about plane mirrors where the reflective surface was a plane surface. But now we will talk about mirrors where the reflective surface is not a plane surface, instead it is a curved surface. So these two examples which I have used in the screen, whether you talk about the rear view mirror of the car or you talk about the dentist's mirror, in both these cases, I'm sure you would understand that plane mirrors will not solve the purpose because in plane mirrors, the image that is formed, that is of the same size as that of the object. So in case of the rear view mirror, if the same size image is formed, you will not be able to see the entire background scenery as you can see here. Similarly, if the dentist is not able to get an enlarged image of the tooth, then there is no point using that mirror because the correct size in, of the tooth is anyways visible to the dentist with his naked eye. So then what is the point of having this special mirror? So let us see what is a spherical mirror. So how do we define a spherical mirror? How do we get a spherical mirror? The word spherical mirror defines itself. Spherical something which is derived from a sphere. So basically you look at this mirror, it is in the form of a big sphere, right? Of which only a part is being visible on this picture. So basically spherical mirror is nothing but a part of a reflective spherical surface. So it is something like a, you imagine a big sphere, a big ball, which is completely reflective, which is like a mirror, which is not a plane mirror, instead a mirror which is in the shape of a sphere. So if you cut a part of this sphere, what you get is a spherical mirror. So if you look at these mirrors, these are spherical mirrors. You see, this is like cut from a sphere, only this part. Similarly, when you look at this mirror, this is also like a part of a big sphere, right? So these are all examples of spherical mirrors. So we call it a part of a big sphere where the entire sphere is a reflective circuit, surface. So if you cut any part of the sphere, what you will see, you will get an inner surface of the sphere, you will get an outer surface of the sphere, right? So this is how it would be. Now in those mirrors where the outer surface is, those mirrors in which the outer surface is not reflective, that is concave mirror. As you can see here, this is the reflective surface. So this is the shiny surface. So wherever you have these hair-like structures, that is the non-shiny surface. So basically whenever the inner surface is shiny, that kind of mirror is called a concave mirror. So it is something like this, the inner surface, let's say this is the outer surface. So the inner surface, wherever the inner surface is shiny, that is concave. Cave means something which goes inside, right? 
and the outer surface if the outer surface is shiny then it is called a convex mirror so here in this case you see the outer surface is shiny this surface is shiny so this is a convex mirror in this case the inner surface is shiny so this is a concave mirror so that's how we differentiate the two types of mirror. The most common example of spherical mirrors you can think of is a spoon. So how does a spoon look like? So this is how a spoon looks like, right? So you have an outer surface, you have an inner surface. So you actually have both concave and convex mirrors in a spoon. So that's how this, uh, you know, like that's how the spherical mirrors are that that's the best example that you can think of when it comes to spherical mirrors so let us perform certain experiments to see how images are formed with spherical mirrors so you see a couple of pictures have been shown where using the same spoon so this you see this is the back side of the spoon so back side is the outer surface that is the back side of the spoon acts as a convex mirror so you see the image that is formed is erect straight image is being formed now when you look at the front side the inner surface of the spoon so that is the concave mirror so in this you see an inverted image is formed so you see the head part is at the bottom so an inverted image is being formed so this itself shows that the two sides of the spoon gives us different types of images that's because the two sides of the spoon are two different types of mirrors again when you bring an object very close to the uh, concave surface of the spoon that is the front surface of the spoon you see that the image is uh, like erect so here also it was the front surface so both of these are like the concave surface of the spoon but in this case the image was inverted in this case the image is erect so what is the difference in this case the object is located quite far from the mirror so you look at the distance of the object from the mirror it is quite far but in this case the object is located very close to the mirror so that's why it is giving an erect image so basically in a concave mirror the type of image that will be formed that will vary with the distance of the image from the mirror so we will learn more about the image formation with both concave and convex mirrors so what i'm trying to show you is with different types of spherical mirrors you get different types of images even with the same type of spherical mirror you get different types of images based on the location or the distance of the object from the mirror so there are a lot of factors which decide which type of image will be formed with a mirror thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again